Chapter 2 Fitting in is hard to do. After a few short years at Glenpaul, it was apparent that I needed a different school to teach me other things because I was getting over what Glenpaul was teaching me way too easy and I wasn't challenged. So it was decided, time for another school, time to go. This school was Fridgewood Elementary and this would be where I learned how to hang out with people, some of my greatest memories, some of my greatest friends, some of my greatest educational moments, so forth and so on, would take place at this school. One of my favorite and most fondest memories that I always remember is there was this little pathway, like a little sidewalk, just like the fence that you open, and when you go in there, there's like this little pathway. But at recess time on the nice days, these kids would have their trikes, like tricycles, and they were all plastic. And these kids would line up at the gate. I was at the quote unquote finish line because it was like a picnic team. And these kids would be like, wait for me to give them the signal. I'd point at them and be like, you ready? They'd say, yeah, and be like, you ready? These kids would take off fast as they could, like fast and the furious. Paul Walker, rest in peace. Paul Walker fast. Like, these kids were just jetting down there. And I'd be the one saying, oh, you won, man, by X amount of time. And it was always fun. And that's probably one of the greatest memories that I have. However, these memories didn't come right away. These memories were a little bit later. Because at first, I was really shy about who I was. It was really hard for me to go to new places. And it still is. Like, you throw me in a new environment, a new school, a new place. I'm still going to be, like, confused. I'm not going to know what to do. But, you know, it's just how I am. I'm not very easy to open up to people I don't know. I just remember going and seeing all these new kids, and they were staring at me. But they were staring because they were curious, not because they didn't like me. But at the time, I didn't know any better because, you know, they probably never seen a kid in a wheelchair before. And it wasn't as widely accepted as it is now. And I just remember being super, super nervous. The classroom I remember being in was with a teacher named Pat Korea. She was just like Diane Preston in the sense that she knew I was something special. She knew I had potential. And she always believed in me just like Diane. And she was really down to earth. I mean, she always was always looking out for us. We always had fun projects. One of my favorite things to do was arts and crafts with like these marbles and you'd like dip the marbles in the paint and you'd put it like in these little boxes and you'd like roll it around and I'd always try and make my marbles do races and I was a speed freak in the sense that I'd try and make everything go fast because my dad likes to go fast in his cars so I was like trying to emulate my dad with the marbles going super fast and you know I'd always they'd always been like okay slow down there Damien you're making the marbles you know jump out the box and I'd make these cool collages and arts and crafts was always fun just don't hand me a pair of scissors that was always the warning because I wasn't the best coordinated with the scissors my other favorite art and craft was uh, glitter <laughs> I don't know why I just think glitter is really cool to like, mess with and all that I remember doing that a lot. My other favorite thing about uh, Pat Korea's class is where I learned how to use a computer. Uh, I remember playing games like Carmen San Diego. Uh, there was like this geography game. God, I wish I could remember the name, but I can't. Um, there, it was like you learn geography and all that. There was a Kid Picks '97. Uh, it was for Mac. Everything was Mac back then. Uh, me and my best friend. Corey Perry, which I'll go into more detail here in a second, we'd always like do these like wrestling promos and we'd always mess around and we'd always like modify the promos because you know the wrestlers were cursed, but we would always have like substitute names for curse words. Corey Perry was like, or is one of my best friends, he is, you know, because this dude was like me in every way. We liked wrestling. We liked all sorts of things. We liked the same food. We grew up kind of the same way. And we were going to the same school for years, man. I mean, me and him would always be like, Yo, did you see what The Rock did on SmackDown? Hope he kicked Triple H's butt, man. Hope he won the title. We'd always talk about wrestling. That's the only thing 
we really talked about it. I mean, we talked about the weekend and all that. But we hung out every day at the playground. Yeah, let our imaginations run wild, man. I mean, some of the happiest memories is with that man. And I just remember always on the computer, we'd always cut some wrestling promo. Cheesy as could be for, you know, seven to nine-year-old. But that's how we were. We just cut it easy, cut it, you know, cheesy and always had fun. Lunchtime wasn't the best, though, with him, man. We'd always be eating chicken nuggets, uh, fruit roll-ups, all this delicious food. You know, now everything is all healthy oriented, but we always ate the chicken nuggets, you know, all the delicious stuff. Chocolate milk day was always the best day, I called it, like, it was like a gift from God, almost chocolate milk day, man. That was always fun. You know, and me and Corey always hung out for years, man. I mean, we did everything together. If it was a group thing, me and him, we were hanging out. No questions asked. And the teacher knew it, too. And it continued this way for years. And we continued at Regiment for years, just, you know, going through the motions, getting older. And then the day came that Corey had to move. And for many years before that, Corey was, you know, always on the bus with me. You know, he would be dropped off before I was. And we would always talk about the day, talk about what we are going to do. And it's hard to have one of your best friends move. And, you know, you're not going to know if you're going to see him again. But I remember right before I left Ridgewood, about when I was uh, nine or so, he said he wasn't going to go with me to uh, elementary school. And that was, uh, that was tough because... Uh, I thought maybe one day that we would uh, see each other again. And we ended up seeing each other in high school. He wasn't with me in a, uh, middle school or nothing like that. But it was tough because best friends are hard to find. And Corey Perry, he's definitely one. I don't talk to him as much as I would like. And maybe I could change that. But man, Corey Perry, if you're listening to this, smell what I'm cooking, brother. Wrestling was always, you know, something we always talked about. And another fun memory I have of Ridgewood is when I started to do what they call mainstream program. Now, mainstream program is when you take someone from a special day class. That's what they call kids with disabilities, the class that they're in. Special day class. And you take them, put them in a mainstream setting. And let them experience like a real life school day like with real things I remember going into those classrooms many a times and I uh, was like uh, I felt really kind of stared at and it felt weird but it wasn't because they didn't like me it was because they didn't know what to think they never seen someone in my condition they had questions they were just curious and I can easily say that now but at the time I didn't know what they were thinking but I just remember fitting in very well and Humor is the main reason for that. Without my humor, I don't think I can connect to people like I do. And it's because of my humor that people really like me as a person. Well, part of it, you know, but humor just kind of held me together. You know, if you can crack a joke to make the mood better, then do it. You know, that's what I thought back in the day. And mainstream just let me feel a little bit more normalcy in my life. And like I said, I don't like that word normal, but that's what it made me feel. Then I stayed at Ridgewood for a few years. And, you know, it kind of became my domain. I knew where to go. I knew what to do. I knew pretty much by my second year, I pretty much knew what we were going to watch every day. Because I've seen every tape every single time. And I just remember, you know, having lots of fun. And I remember the last day I was there. I really didn't know what to think, you know, it was each place that I'm going to tell you in this book, I get attached to, and it was just really sad to see my fun in there, but, you know, a lot of things change, and a lot of fun happens when you go to new places, and it was because of that, you know, Ridgewood, it was just another place where I have a lot of fond memories, I met my first best friend there, you know, I learned what it was like to be in a regular school. I have a lot of arts and crafts memories. And a lot of those memories I'll never forget. And no one could ever take them away from me. And 
after Regiment, I went to a different place called Lafayette. But I'm going to leave that for Chapter 3. So I hope you guys do enjoy. If you have any questions, please let me know. Please let me know what you guys think of the new art graphic. It's just a thumbnail for now. I only do that because the uh, graphics help take a longer time with making these. And I hope that I can get these out in a timely manner. Well, I hope you guys like this, and I hope to talk to you guys soon. So I'll see you guys later for Chapter 3. Thank you so much for listening. I'll talk to you later. Bye.